This introductory lecture gives you a quick overview of the U.S. financial market system. And by the way, when, I, when we use the term financial market, we're not necessarily referring to a physical location. And as I write here, it describes the environment within which the flow of funds takes place between two parties. We refer to them as surplus units and the deficit units. The surplus units are those individuals and organizations that have a little bit more than they need and as a result they do want to lend them out or invest them if you like and the deficit units are those who have a little less than they need and as a result they're going to borrow them or obtain them in the form of equity uh, primarily for investment purposes and also for public financing in the case of um, governments and so here we have the major role players in those two seg uh, segments of the financial market. So uh, the surplus segment, um, as you would imagine, the household sector, as you and I, we are the largest suppliers of funds. And we supply those funds when we go to banks and open a savings account, we purchase stocks and we purchase bonds. So when we perform those financial activities, we are essentially supplying funds to the financial system. And like I hinted on a little bit earlier, uh, businesses are going to be needing these monies, if you like, to make various investment purposes for their investors and governments, of course, to finance their deficit spending. And so um, this is the illustration of it. And so you're going to be asking, well, how do these funds, how are these funds made available uh, in the financial market from those who provide them to those who need them? Well, it's, uh, for the most part, we go through um, a system of uh, financial institutions we refer to as financial intermediaries. So these financial intermediaries, like your commercial banks and and uh, investment banks and finance companies, etc., they intermediate between the uh, surplus spending units and the deficit spending units, thereby facilitating the flow of funds from one segment of the market to the other. And so one way we can classify the financial markets is in terms of its structure. We can describe it in terms of whether it's a debt market or an equity market. Of course, debt market means that it's a, a market for individuals who wish to lend and those who wish to borrow, while equity market refers to the market describing those who wish to invest and become uh, part owners of a firm or even whole owners of a firm. And then we can also describe it in terms of primary and secondary market. And as I show here, primary market it simply describes the financial market for newly issued securities, for newly issued stocks and bonds, that is. While secondary market is going to be the market for existing securities, also referred to as seasoned securities or seasoned issues. And so when you own a stock or you own a bond, and then at some point in the future, you decide that you don't want it anymore, you want to sell it, that's going to be referred to as a secondary market transaction. Thirdly, we can re uh, describe a financial mar the financial markets as organized or as over-the-counter. If it's organized, then now we're going to be referring to a physical exchange like the New York Stock Exchange, the Chicago Stock Exchange, the London Stock Exchange, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, to name just a few. Over-the-counter means that trading takes place electronically like the NASDAQ, which actually is an acronym for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotation, the system of trade um, on the OTC over the counter. Fourthly, we can describe financial markets as a money market or a capital market. Money market, that's the nickname for short term, uh, the market for short term assets. So whenever you hear of the term a money asset or a money market asset, we're referring to the trading of financial assets with a maturity of 12 months or less, such as treasury bills, certificates of deposits, commercial papers, bankers acceptances. These are the key ones. And then capital market, on the other hand, is going to be a market for the trading of long-term assets. And th these are going to be assets with maturity in excess of one year. And of course, the most long-term of all long-term assets is going to be stocks. Because when you purchase a stock, you become an owner of the, of the business forever if you want to. Uh, it also includes long-term bonds and real estate, all right, properties, that is. And then finally, we can describe financial markets in terms of whether it's a spot market or a futures market. 
spot market look at that it's also referred to as cash market which is a market describing the exchange of assets where uh, payment is made uh, right at the point of delivery so you buy it and pay for it right away and so when you buy a stock or bond and you pay your broker uh, for those purchases that's a spot market transaction in the future is also referred to as forward market in specific terms here traders are going to uh, are going to be agreeing on the price at which some underlying assets like a stock a bond property uh, um, um, commodities uh, would uh, would be sold however the delivery of that asset and also the payments uh, for that uh, instrument is going to be made at some uh, predefined future date now though we can also uh, characterize financial assets the financial markets are in terms of the assets that are traded and for example when we say the bond market or the debt market we're referring precisely to the market for um, debt instruments if it's an equity market or stock market then we're referring to market for the trading of stocks and uh, that which gives you ownership of a firm or part or ownership thereof and then it could be a foreign exchange market which is a market for the trading of uh, of uh, currencies and uh, the nickname for foreign exchange market is forex or fx as i show here a commodity market is going to be a market for the trading of hardcore assets also referred to as real assets all right so a real asset is uh, one that you can touch and feel such as metals energy uh, agriculture and uh, various other commodities that might be tradable many of them are going to be traded in the secure derivatives market which is another ca category examples are futures uh, uh, contracts forward contracts options contracts swap contracts and uh, you're going to learn a little bit more about these markets in time uh, but for example in a futures market traders are going to agree on the price today at which the uh, underlying assets will exchange hands at a predefined time in the future as I mentioned earlier and then of, then of course we have real estate markets which is the market for properties for properties a few other definitions are contained here in this introduction uh, such as uh, foreign bond which is a bond sold in a foreign country and denominated in that country's currency and so if we have an American company like Walmart go to uh, uh, let's say Singapore uh, to sell bonds in Singaporean currency actually Singaporean currency is also called the dollar as it turns out that's going to be referred to as a foreign bond and the example I gave here such as Peugeot which is a French company selling bonds here in the United States and those bonds are denominated in our home currency the US dollar uh, actually the US currency uh, the international symbol is USD FYI and then a euro bond this is also specific which is a bond denominated in the currency other than the currency of the country in which it is uh, issued for example here a bond denominated in US dollars but this bond is sold overseas in Japan for example that's going to be called a euro bond so the word uh, the beginning beginning of this uh, word euro has nothing to do with Europe as a continent or for that matter the euro currency so don't confuse those two and then we also, for, for that matter, have euro currencies, which are foreign currencies that, that are deposited in banks outside of the home country. And the most important euro currency is the euro dollar. And euro dollars, what are they? Short-term interest-bearing deposits of U.S. currency held in banks outside of the United States. And, uh, and the interest rate on these... Uh, loanable uh, dollar deposits is uh, is uh, called LIBOR short for London interbank offered rates all right and I right here describe a little bit more about LIBOR which you can read up the most popular one is the three month US dollar rate and there are now actually LIBOR for uh, uh, the world's major currencies including the euro the, the British pound sterling the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc now though finally here I show you a little bit of the trend in interest rates which interest rate is the price of uh, a loanable fund and the two um, 
aspects of interest rates I show you here are interest rates on long-term bonds and short-term bonds. So here's the uh, legend right here. So you can see the green here shows you the trend in short-term interest rates marked by the yield to maturity on U.S. Treasury uh, on three-month U.S. Treasury bond. While the blue trend right here shows you um, the uh, um, the time series for uh, yield to maturity of 10-year um, U.S. Uh, Treasury bond. So by the way, uh, U.S. Treasury instruments with a maturity of 12 months or below, we refer to them as Treasury bills. If they have a maturity of more than 12 months, we refer to them as Treasury bonds. Although you can also use Treasury notes to, to denote intermediate maturity of up to five years, between one and five years if you want to. But the key concept to walk away here uh, with is that we can expect the interest rate on long-term bonds, the blue, to be above that for short-term instruments. But ever, and that's what you're going to see here. So you'll see that the blue is, for the most part, above that of uh, the green. The gray, by the way, is the difference. All right, you can see the legend here. But I show this to um, to get you to see that quite a few times you're going to see what we refer to as inverted yield curve. It's a case where long-term, um, short-term interest rates are above long-term interest rates. You can see it right here in the early 2000s. You can also see it right here again. You can see that the green, which is the short-term yield, is above the blue right here, which is right before the financial crisis. You can see 2007, 2008 in the aftermath of that. And then finally, you can also see it here uh, right, uh, right at the beginning of uh, the year uh, 2019, uh, leading into uh, 2020. And, uh, and the interesting thing here is that, as has been documented elsewhere, inverted yield curves tend to precede um, economic recessions. You can see that this inverted yield curve is right before the 9-11 uh, era recession. 9-11 uh, occurred on September 11, 2001, and then there was a recession that occurred right around that time. Also, look over here. This inverted yield curve precedes the huge, the Great Recession uh, that came in the wake of the uh, 2008 global financial crisis. And now, uh, right here, you can see that this uh, inverted yield curve that began from around the first quarter of 2019 and continuing um, into the second quarter, um, as it turns out, we fell into a recession in the first uh, quarter of actually in the second quarter of uh, 2020. However, interestingly, the recession that came in the first and second quarter of 2020 and hopefully and probably continued um, is, or was one that was caused by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic that crippled the entire um, uh, world actually. And so um, inter it's interesting to note that while these other recessions had financial crises associated with them, this one recession right here um, that uh, occurred in 2020 um, had to do with um, a global pandemic, the novel coronavirus. So I thought um, you know that that might be of interest to you. But before we walk away, here's a good website to go and check out some of those uh, financial assets and instruments I mentioned. This is Bloomberg.com. Right here you're gonna see these tabs. You click on commodities and you're gonna see the major commodities that you that we have, energy, metals, agriculture, etc. And then uh, if you went back to the main uh, uh, page you're going to see stocks you click on that and you're going to see some of the major stock indices and uh, their yields uh, and their uh, levels by the way and then you, you can do the same for rates and bonds um, go back down here currencies futures contracts etc so um, you know check them out and uh, you're going to enjoy learning more about uh, the U.S. and also, for that matter, some of the uh, global financial markets. Hope you enjoy the presentation.